Welcome to Module 5, Pricing Options. We are going to talk about different ways you can price your packages. We will get into the nitty gritty of actually pricing for your packages later, but let's talk a little bit more in depth about the pros and cons of different pricing models. Let's start with hourly. This is how most designers start out and it makes perfect sense. You don't always know how long a project's going to take, what the scope is going to be. Hourly means you work a certain number of hours, you invoice at your hourly rate for that number of hours. The pros of this model is that it is simple and clear. You tell the client your hourly rate, you invoice them accordingly. Now, the cons of this model, this has happened to me, is that unless you are able to give your clients an estimate of hours up front, clients just have no clue, no clue. And I get it, how long interior design takes. And so I remember putting together all my hours for the month and preparing to send those monthly invoices and feeling like I was going to barf and die because it was so expensive. I was so worried. Oh gosh, like, is the client going to freak out? Are they going to be mad at me? Are they going to pay for this? And I just felt so much anxiety with hourly that I was determined to move away from it as quickly as possible. I also had many clients... (laughs) what Kimberly Selden calls Canadian fire. I got Canadian fired a few times where clients were upset with the cost of their monthly bills. And at one point they would just be like, you know what? This has been great. We're just going to, we're going to finish this off ourselves. We've got it from here. It's a very nice way of saying I'm tired of these unexpected expenses and we're done here. So hourly I do think is a decent starting point when you don't have any data under your belt for how long projects take. But I really would encourage you to track all your hours and move on quickly to another model. I will say if you're going to do hourly, I highly recommend starting with either a retainer or a minimum hours investment. For me, depending on the scope of the project, it's usually 20 hours. So they prepay upfront with a check or credit card for 20 hours of design time. I track all my time. And once we've hit that 20 hour mark, I let them know, Hey, we're at the end of your initial 20 hour deposit. We'll be switching to hourly billing. Talk about this upfront, talk about it often, and don't let this be a surprise to them. But that is a way to make hourly more successful and a little more palatable for you since you get some revenue, some cash in the bank right up front, and you're not working and scrambling and just hoping they pay that first monthly invoice. So hourly does work, but if you think about it from the consumer side, I'm not super keen signing up for something hourly where I don't know how much it's going to cost me. And this is why I really think flat fee or value-based fees, whatever you want to call it, is a really great model. I will start with the cons of a flat fee though, because I have lost lots of money, is that if you underestimate, you're kind of (laughs) screwed. I did a kitchen project a few years ago and I calculated a flat fee and it was my first kitchen remodel and I just did not take into account the uh uh-oh factor, the padding I needed to cover myself based on the unexpected, the add-ons. And basically, I charged a fee for this project, tracked all my hours, and when I did the math, if I had charged hourly, I would have invoiced almost double what I did for that design fee. And so I got scared. I stayed away from flat fee for a long time, but it's not that flat fees are bad or wrong. It's that I just didn't have my calculations correct. I really do think flat fee is a great model. And with a tool that I'll be providing you, it will be very helpful in you able to figure out quickly what a flat fee needs to be for a project based on the size or the scope or the time you think it'll take. I think this model works really, really well because you're able to manage clients' expectations up front. They know from day one what the investment is going to be for you as a designer There's no surprises. Of course, if there's a scope change or an addition, that becomes an additional fee. That's a given. But 
my clients are just so much happier with flat fee because there's no surprises. And that's why I think this is a really valuable model to consider because of the improvement you will see in your client relationships and how your projects move from start to finish. Gone are the days of anxiety (laughs) of sending monthly time billing invoices. Clients don't question your hours because as long as you're delivering on what you said you would do, they are thrilled. Now, I understand that jumping into a full flat fee model from start to finish can be intimidating. And so I have a lot of designer friends that do a hybrid model where they charge a flat fee for design because there's a little bit more control over the design phase. And then they switch to hourly for implementation, procurement, styling, all of that. It's certainly a great option. I prefer flat fee just because, again, avoiding surprises, avoiding those icky hourly bills. But hybrid is a great way to kind of transition into that and also put the ball in the client's court. If they know they're paying hourly during installation and implementation, they're probably going to be a lot quicker in responding to you and making decisions and moving on. And of course, we talked earlier about a commission-based pricing model, which really doesn't work anymore. This was definitely in the pre-internet days. Designers really could make all of their revenue simply from trade-only product sales. I said it before, and I want to say it again just so I'm clear. Earning revenue, making money on selling products is a fabulous part of your business model, but it really cannot be the only way you make revenue. Think of us like a tire shop, an auto mechanic. A client comes in, they need new tires. Not only do you sell them the tire, the furniture, you install the tire for a fee, the design fee. It is totally okay and acceptable to do both. It makes sense. And earning money not only on design fees, but also with product commissions and selling trade-only products as a retailer is a fabulous business model that can really expand your revenue and your income potential. I want to talk about designers that are just starting out because I know that's why you're here. Many of you are brand new and this all feels overwhelming. I will say, myself included, most designers start hourly and I totally get that. Here are a few important things to know. The first is, again, talk about money early and often. I was so scared to talk money with my clients early on and that's not good and does not set you up for success. It's uncomfortable, but the more you do it, the more you make it part of your process from the beginning, the easier it's going to be and the better your client relationships will be. When you're hourly, obviously you need to track all of your time. Designers lose money on hourly because they forget about a 15 minute phone call here and there. They don't put that on because they feel bad and suddenly they're not making money and they can't understand why. Track an invoice for all of your time for the project And once you have a couple projects under your belt, once you have this hourly data, you know how long design takes, you know how long installation takes, you know how long styling takes, you can then transition to a hybrid or a flat fee quickly. Hourly is most likely not where you want to land. I know there are designers that do this successfully. My experience has shown me flat fee is a game changer for managing expectations and having much happier clients because they know up front if they can afford you or not. They don't find out halfway (laughs) when they've spent more money than they're comfortable with. And then their project fizzles and the relationship ends. So that is a look at different pricing models and the advantages and disadvantages of each. In module six, we're going to talk about how to estimate your hours in advance and why even if you are charging hourly, this is really important to be able to do. I'll see you then.